I'm Marcia Hansen. Welcome to my blog. As you visit me on this site, you will frequently hear references to Einstein because I think his thinking is absolutely fruitful in our search for intelligent design. Einstein once said, in view of such harmony in the cosmos, which I, with my limited human understanding, am able to recognize, there are yet people who say there is no God. But what really makes me angry is that they quote me for the support of such views. Now, Einstein did not believe in a personal God, and he didn't believe in the continuation of the, of the personality or the soul after death. But he certainly acknowledged religious genius and he acknowledged a superior intelligence underlying the structure of the universe. And he considered the comprehensibility of the world to be a miracle. A conversation that he uh, had with his friend Maurice Sullivan is included in his book, The Evolution of Physics. And Sullivan was always just sort of mystified that Einstein considered the comprehensibility of the world to be such an eternal mystery. Here's what Einstein said. Well, a priori one should expect a chaotic world which cannot be grasped by the mind in any way. There lies the weakness of positivist and professional atheists. I'm not using this statement to support any point of view that Einstein wasn't an atheist and it's on my side. I mean, by now you probably realize I, I'm a Christian. I have a Christian point of view. But I think that Einstein's views are so fruitful for anyone who is willing to really look at intelligent design from a scientific point of view. In fact, I, I like to call on non-Christians sometimes to help think through these questions that we all have. These questions belong to all of us. And I very much appreciate the writings of Deepak Chopra on this subject. His exchange with Michael Shermer are in the Huffington Post or something I, I highly recommend. So be sure to go and, and look that information up. He just makes the most cogent arguments and points that I think you would want to hear. But I want to return to Einstein's point of view about the comprehensibility of the universe. Now, and that, that, that actually constitutes a miracle. I quite agree with him in light of what quantum physics is continually revealing to us. Now, in The God Delusion, Richard Dawkins gives an example of what he considers a miracle as violations of natural law. And he gives an example of a statue waving, which we know really shouldn't be happening because all the atoms are jiggling around and they're just not going to move in the same direction. Like it would take an astonishing event to have all those atoms going the same way at the same time and for us to see a statue waving. And he even gives a figure in there if you started writing the number at the moment of the Big Bang, you still wouldn't have enough zeros there to, uh, to actually record what possibilities are for that occurring. But I think that Einstein's point of view that the totality of the comprehensibility of the universe constitutes a miracle is a more legitimate view of a miracle than what Richard Dawkins is even suggesting. It's incomprehensible that, so, that the organizing principles exist so that we can have a reliable physical reality that we all know. And I think that, once again, I made this point on an earlier blog. It, this is not a God of the gaps argument. We have to account for this. We have to take into notion the intelligence underlying this, calling this order out of what ought to be chaos based on what we know about physical matter at the smallest levels. So I invite comments on this and I prefer actually to have comments from physicists or from theologians who want to weigh in as opposed to just people wanting to express an opinion based on emotions. We don't get to vote on whether or not there is a God. You know that is an either or question. I am convicted and convinced that there is a God based on experience. 
experiencing God. And I know that that is not uh, grounds for any kind of a scientific opinion, but I'm so convinced I stake everything that I have. My intellectual gifts tell me that there is a God, and my experiences tell me that there is the superior intelligence that science actually cannot avoid, and it's really a mistake for any of the luminaries who are on that atheist bus to remain on it. I wish people like uh, Steven Weinberg and Roger Penrose, who are just brilliant physicists with so much to offer, would take a different uh, point of view and allow for the possibilities and think about how we can find experimental guidance to show this reality. It is tragic to deny a, a reality that could advance humanity by leaps and bounds. Once again, I'm not trying to support any particular religious view, even though I happen to be a Christian, but I join hands with Deepak Chopra in saying that this intelligent design is a question for science in, this, in the same way that gravity is a question for science. None of us own that phenomenon. We need to explore it objectively. So come back and visit me again on the blog.